Good morning, brothers and sisters. Today is November 16. Let's pray together. Dear Lord, we praise you. You are holy, God. You are completely perfect, Lord. Thank you. Even though you are holy and high, you never despise us. Instead, you are willing to take the initiative to find us and let us become holiness because of you. Thank you for calling us to be your holy children and set us apart from the world, Heavenly Father. Please help us to live in holiness in this age, where it is not easy to tell right and wrong, even if our choices or opinions are sometimes considered strange, incompatible, or even enemies of the world. May you give us courage to stand firm in your holiness. And do what is pleasing you. We pray for all the missionaries, pastors, and all the brothers and sisters who preach your message and teach the Bible. May you strengthen them so that they can continue to share the truth without any fear. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Hello, brothers and sisters. Thank you for joining us for devotion. Today we're in First Thessalonians chapter four. As Paul closes his letter, he's urging the Thessalonians to live a life pleasing to God by doing two things: living in holiness and loving one another. Holiness is one of the most important attributes of God. In Isaiah chapter six, the heavenly beings proclaim, "Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of His glory." The four living creatures in Revelation four never cease to say, "Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come." But just what exactly does being holy mean? It means being set apart or consecrated. As the Creator of the universe, both the spiritual and heavenly realms, God is completely set apart. He is in a league of His own. No one or nothing can compare to Him. As image bearers of God, especially those who have been redeemed by Jesus, we are called to reflect His holiness in this world. In this chapter, Paul highlights a specific area that the Thessalonians struggle in: sexual immorality, mainly because of the cultural environment they're in. Needless to say, this still applies to us today, especially in the highly sexualized and humanistic culture in the West. So, how are we relying on the Holy Spirit? To control our bodies and remain sexually pure. If we struggle with lust, are we seeking God's forgiveness and actively fighting this battle with spiritual weapons or our own strength? Do we have accountability partners in Christ that we can trust? Second, we live a life pleasing to God by loving one another, specifically our brothers and sisters in Christ. God is love, and Jesus said, "By loving one another." People will recognize that we are his disciples. Even though the Thessalonians are doing that pretty well, Paul is saying in verse ten that they need to do this more and more. Indeed, our love for others should continue to increase as we experience more and more God's everlasting love for us every day. So, how are we loving one another despite the limitations of the pandemic? Is there someone you can call or text today just to check in on them? I pray that we will all strive to pursue holiness and brotherly love, so that our lives would be pleasing to God. Thanks again for joining us today.